Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Buster Show. Today we have another very special guest, Alicia Newman. Welcome to the show. What's up? So excited to be here. Donning the Toronto Raptors t-shirt. Hey, champions. Almost like two seasons in a row. <laughs> it really does seem like that. They've had the longest championship run without having to win two championships. Isn't that uh, crazy? In a, in a very long time. What... Mm. Let's just start it off talking talking about the atmosphere there because are you from Toronto? I'm just like outside the city. So London, Ontario, um, and then another like 10 minutes outside that city, um, Delaware, Ontario, um, and then two hours, of course, to Toronto. But um, I once I went to Miami, I came back and this has been kind of my home ever since because this is where I train. This is where all my team is, just everyone here, my brand development, everyone's here. So um, it kind of feels like this is where I was born and raised to in Toronto in the city. <laughs> that must have been pretty exciting last year. Yeah, it was. It was super exciting. I mean, I wasn't right in the city, um, which was kind of sad. I was overseas um, competing. But I mean, the energy, even when I got back, was like everyone walking around like they're champions. It was so awesome. I loved it. It was like, you know, everyone vibe off of that. Let's go. <laughs> I love that. Um, I want to talk, I want to, I'm curious about your origin story. So is there anybody in your family? Was it a friend? Was it a teacher or a coach? Who got you in? Who got you really locked in on your yeah. career and passion? Yeah, well, my, my dad and my mom are very athletic individuals. There have always been someone that like put their children in every single sport. Um, and my mom would tap into like even dance lessons and music and piano lessons but she really knew like when I was a gymnast that this was like I would hide in the foam pit when I was like little and I didn't want to leave like and I, I would say that I was sick to go to school so then I could be go to practice early at the track so mm -hmm. she kind of like understood like I was going to be an athlete and I think there was never really I think all of my siblings, well, I know all of my siblings are very competitive. We like, whether it's life stuff, whether it's just like cooking a meal, like we're always competitive and always like critiquing each other to help each other be better. Um, so I think it just is the environment I was in growing up. Um, it really developed me to be um, like, take no for an answer. Like you never take no for an answer. Right. And uh, that's kind of like how it started. But as I started getting better and better in gymnastics, and then I retired that, coaches started seeing me at school. Like, she's not your normal. Like, she's playing soccer, baseball, and, and kicking the ball, like, out of the park and the <laughs> running past all the boys at recess. Like, she's sprinting and beating them all. So you could kind of take me out a little bit. And you could see that, like, I was yeah. not your normal – female high school girl you know so it wasn't, um, and then it it wasn't a feat, there. it wasn't a feat on the scouts end to figure figure out that you were going to be no good. yeah no but they just didn't know what I was going to be good at because I was kind of like average in everything but good enough to be as good as the boys um and then that's kind of how it started and then I started track and here I am <laughs> so what made you go from uh track to pole vaulting yeah, so when I started um, track and field, I loved just the how 100 meters was done in 12 seconds or 11 seconds, like, let's go get the gun going and let's go, go, go. Um, but then I also started feeling like I went from 30, 30 hours a week in gymnastics to 16 hours a week in track, and it just wasn't enough for me. And so I was like, what other events can I do? And so I started trying other events. Um, and then the manager of the club from London, Ontario said, why don't you try pole vault? It's like one of the longest lasting events. Like the elite women are out there for three to four hours during all meets. Um, and it's also very, very hard. Like it's like, it's going to take you six months before you even go to your first competition. Um, and I was like, well, that's kind of boring. Like, what am I supposed to prepare for something? I don't even know what's going to happen. And they're like, well, just try it. And that's what happened. I tried it and broke, broke that meet record actually. Um, my very first meet and then it kind of just pulled me in because I was like okay that's kind of cool I see my name on like the list and on the paper of like record holder and I'm like oh that kind of looks good <laughs> I and I think that. that's what drew me in <laughs> I love that what what how do you even prepare for something like that is it all um, vertical leap what what goes in to a pole vault yeah, I think it's what's so cool about our event is it's a head to toe event. Um, you could be in the best shape possible. They call it like the leanest muscle, 
um, that your fat percentage low as, as can be. And like, you could be at the elite level of an athlete ever, but if your mind's not right, like there's no way. And that's, what's so crazy about like, and that's what I love about pole vault too, is like, I mean, you could be on all the steroids you want, but if you don't mentally put that pole in the box and bend the pole, you're going nowhere, but back onto the track. Right. So you almost have to, every single time, it's like your life's up for, <laughs> for survival every time you go down. So there's a adrenaline and there's a thrill of defining gravity and doing something without wings and flying in the air and landing on a mat and pushing boundaries of how high someone can jump from the ground up in the air. Um, and that's what I love about pole ball. I think it's just always been something that every single trip down the runway, something different happens, um, whether that's negative or positive, And that's what keeps bringing me back to it. That's so interesting. So what are you thinking? You mentioned how, you know, so much of it is mental. What do you think before mm -hmm. you go for a pole vault? Yeah, I, well, number one, like the number one rule is never let go. <laughs> you never want to let go of your pole in your hand. But the one thing that I it's always, flying, teach, right? <laughs> you would like take off and go fly. I don't know. It depends on what way you bent it, but you would go fly in whatever way it wants to shoot you out. Um, but I think that the only thing that I think of is go back to having faith and remembering all my training of this is what you're good at and like you've done things that nobody's done in Canada and you need to have faith in your training and your coaches and your abilities that you're going to be fine first of all to that safety note um and then after it's like let's light it up like let's be number one like that adrenaline that you just want to be the best um especially each meet um so it's pretty it's pretty like pretty much like all or nothing from the first step that's what you think about I love that. I, the intensity. I don't I mean, it reminds me of like Michael Jordan. I love It's amazing. Right? Well, it's so funny. I think there was a clip that actually Michael Jordan, um, because at that time, um, the world record holder, um, Sergei Bubka was killing it and breaking world records after world records. And actually, I think they did like a little commercial together. So it's actually, I have to go find it and see it. But um, when he did the, um, um, the MJ documentary, um, it kind of came up in that. So it was kind of cool, cool to see. Yeah. Really cool. So what age were you when you set the record in that first meet you mentioned? I was 15. So <laughs> I started pole vaulting. I know, right? I was like cute little Alicia. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so innocent. <crazy. laughs> so you're 15. Did you finish high school? Yes, I finished high school. And that's actually, it was really cool to see because in Canada, you you're raised upon of, you know, academics is so excellent here and you want to go to school for academics and academics aren't as expensive in the States. So you don't really think about like, oh, I'm going to be an Olympic athlete and get paid for it. You think, okay, what am I going to go to school for? And I hated school. Like I was the yeah. kid that like, oh, I hated going. I hated learning one way. Like I'm a very hands-on person and then try to turn it around to a way that it makes me feel comfortable, I guess, performing or doing yeah. and that's why I was so excellent in sport is like because I was able to like take pole vault and there's so many different ways to jump high and make it my like swag like when I go down like I jump the way I jump you know um and so once someone told me that I could get full ride scholarship to the states and keep pursuing um track and field is when I was like let's go like let's do it what do I need to do so my last year I crammed in my ACTs wrote my SATs um and then got a full ride scholarship to University of Miami and I was down in Florida for four years hey, well, um delayed congratulations <laughs> oh well thanks <laughs> you know it was definitely a highlight of my my I guess my childhood because you know like well I guess in, in Canada you have to have 80s to 90s to get into a really good university here. We call it university, not college. And so when I was going to apply for schools, it was like I was a 75, 78 type of student. And so it was really hard for me to get into schools where the states and my athletics gave me an opportunity now to be, I did kinesiology and sports med, but with, I was able to not just go to you know, like a good university and a good school, but I was able to like compete and like get better as an individual. And that's what I love. And I think a lot of um, athletes in Canada should do something like that. It's, it's pushes you because there's so many people that want to be great in the States and you don't have time to slack. 
And so I use that energy in the States to make myself better. I love that. So it is. So <laughs> let's talk Olympics for a second. Right before we mm. came on, I was complimenting you on your Olympics necklace, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. I know, um, that's so nice. <laughs> so what was your, your first, I guess, realization that you could be an Olympian? When, when did that thought come about? Mm. Or was that always there that's from the very beginning? Well, I think when I was little, like I would tell my mama, 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 like I want to watch the, the Olympics like every two years, like let's put the Olympics on. And my mom never really understood how a six year old knew that. And she was like, mama, Olympics on this year? So mama. And so I kind of knew and it was like a really cool thing to me to see. Um, I really love figure skating. I love the gymnast. I love how beautiful they looked on the floor and mm -hmm. figure skating, how like nice posture they were. And they were just in this character of like, you know, so much pride and joy representing the country. And I think that's where it kind of started initially, but probably not until my second year, third year university that I was like, uh oh, like I'm getting really good here. And I have like really, really high potential to be an Olympian. And once Olympic year came around, I just really focused. I, I always told myself like parties will always be there, but Olympics won't. <laughs> And I would always Party say that to will myself. always be there. Right? <laughs> it was so awesome. And I'm like, yo, Alicia, where do you, sometimes you just need to take your own advice sometimes. But I laugh at it now because it was, it was a process that I needed to sacrifice at that time um, to really dial in to get to that level. Um, now, once I'm at this level, I can enjoy more. Like, I can do things. I can go to parties. It's not as detrimental as it was before. So um, I think that was kind of my senior year. I was really like focused. I really was eating right, wasn't going to clubs, wasn't drinking, wasn't doing, you know, college things. And I, I qualified for my first Olympics that year and graduated university in 2016. So it was a really big year for me, for sure. That's, that's an exciting year. Yeah. So what, yeah. what was the difference between your expectations of being an Olympian and then mm -hmm. being an Olympian once you actually got there and you had to, you had to do the Olympics thing. Yeah. Well, it was so funny. Cause I remember like when I, when I qualified for crying, the family's crying, I'm all like excited. Everything's happening. We go to Rio we're in Brazil. It's like beautiful there. There's so many people, everyone's so excited that it's in their country. Um, and then it was like, it was over. And I was mm. like, whoa, <laughs> what just happened? I felt like I was taking it in, but I wasn't because I was so focused on performing well and jumping well that it almost like hurt me because I put so much pressure on myself instead of just going, having fun and doing what I was doing all year to qualify for the Olympics. Yeah. And I think if I were to tell first time Olympians, it would always be take it in, but at the end of the day, the sun will always rise. And that is what you have to have that mentality around because I was so, I remember, gosh, the morning we had qualifications, I think at 10 a.m., I had to be in the checkout zone three hours before. So that's 7 a.m. So I had to eat about an hour and a half before. So I was up at four, <laughs> but I took melatonin oh, at no. like at like 11 p.m. Oh, and I had no. to be up at four. And I was like, Alicia, like, what are you doing? You've never take melatonin. You've never done this. <laughs> and so I was trying to do all these things. And it was like, Alicia, just calm down, like take it in, do what you're used to do, and then just go and have fun. Um, and so I think that's what I was so excited about Tokyo. Cause I was like, I was, I'm wise, I'm more experienced. Like I'm ready, like, let's go. But um, of course they're postponed, but it's still something that I, it dwells in my head of like, I took it so serious and I have to, have to tell like other Olympians and first time Olympians, not a lot of people qualify for the Olympics. Like it is a very special title and it's something that is so honoring in our world today that you need to like take that in during that whole time and not overthink it um, because you deserve to be there. I think that's great advice. Um, it, it's, it's so funny too. I, I've heard a lot of wild stories about, um, parties going on and, and stuff yes. like that, which seems so, you know, <laughs> antithetical to what an Olympian is. Did you see any of that while you were there? Were oh there gosh, parties yeah. going on between the athletes? Were athletes <laughs> mixing? What, what, what was going on? Oh my God. You know, what's the funniest thing is like, 
it's like a buildup, right? Everyone yeah. is like, yes, we did our hard work. We're here. And everyone just wants to like, once they're done, let go. And like, oh, I trained all these hours. And they usually say it's about 10,000 hours to be an elite athlete. And you you give everything you got to then to this one moment. And like I said, it goes by like this. And you're like, wow, really? <laughs> and then you just want to let go. So what was cool was there's like Lululemon parties. There's um, Nike house parties. There's Red Bull house parties. There's each country hosts parties. So it's really cool because there's like um, an in village like, yo, see you at the Red Bull party or like, like everybody kind of lets people know and then you, you let everyone know in your group. Um, and then we end up all being together. Um, and it's, it's what's so cool about it is like, we'll be with people that don't speak our language, you know, like Germans or Russians or anyone. And all we want to do is party. So we're all taking <laughs> shots together, but we don't know what no one's saying. So I think it's like so amazing. And so, um, it's like a really cool experience because everyone wants to celebrate their accomplishments together and you wouldn't want to do it with any other people, but Olympians, um, because you know what it took to get there. And so that's kind of the vibe. And, and the vibe is like, you walk into the Olympic village, like you're number one, even if you're ranked last in the, in your top 32 in the world, yeah. you still walk in the Olympic village, like you're number one. And it's really cool that that energy like vibes off of each other. And it's really, really fun to be around that for the 16 days. That's incredible. I can only imagine like mm -hmm. everybody thinking that they're like, it's so incredible. It's like, mm -hmm. and you meet really like legendary people too. Like, like Michael Phelps was there, Usain Bolt was there on my last Olympics. We were we were out in a club and we were all partying together and it was really cool to see um, an environment of like people that respected each other because of the title. Um, yeah. And it's like, we know what it took for you to get here. Now let's all just have a good time and respect each other and no really drama, which is kind of nice, except for if there's like bad things that happen out on the field or the play, but other than that you know you kind of get over it and you move forward so there's drama there's drama well, I mean there's always drama there's never there's not drama <laughs> um, that's what makes things cool right <laughs> yeah <laughs> sometimes uh, right. so going, when you're not involved <laughs> exactly going going into it was there anybody who you, I mean you mentioned Michael and, and Usain was there anybody that you wanted mm. to meet um not so much wanted to meet it's really funny because people are like who's your role model who's that and I really wanted like I'm like my my own role model like I want to be Alicia Newman in 10 years so I'm striving to be the best version of myself okay. but there are other people in the Olympic village and in the Olympic I guess aura that you want to vibe off of. So the gymnasts were a really big thing for me to go and watch the Canadian gymnasts and the US gymnasts. So I made sure that I got tickets to go and see them. Nice. Um, I also went to um, um, to see um, the horseback riding. I just found there was like a, an etiquette, like a very high luxurious presence. And I really wanted to vibe off of that too. Um, and I think also just like supporting other teammates too has been something like meeting other people on Team Canada that don't live in my area or other sports. That was a really big, um, I think, step for me is to like, hey, like, I'm on your team, like we're teammates, like, let me get to know you type thing. Um, but it was really cool because it's like, I mean, yeah, like even the Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt, I think because track, I've been around track, right? I've seen Usain Bolt run after run after. And I think I take advantage of that. Like, I don't even think like, oh, it's just Usain Bolt. But to watch him perform you don't want to like get his autograph you want to be better than him and you know you and that is like you want to take yes. from his game exactly so you, you you keep an eye out for like who's around and stuff but again when we're in the olympic village like you're very respectful it's not like people are like let me get a picture da, 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 da. like you let oh, them eat course. you let them do their thing and i think people are really good at that um i mean some people aren't but that's when you know you just ask them to go away and that's when you get drama. <laughs> yeah, right? There you go. That's when drama happens. <laughs> uh, no, that's great, though. I, yeah. I, I wonder, do you, I mean, I, I assume the answer is gymnastics, but when you look at some of the other sports, are there any that would equate best with basketball and, like, a vertical mm -hmm. leap help as far as – Oh, for, like, pole vaulting concerned? Yeah. Yeah, I think pole vault is very specific. It's so technical, 
Um, so like, again, like definitely gymnastics is very, very technical. Um, I find the individual sports are, are kind of the same. Um, you, you look at sprinters too. Um, you could have the top eight guys all as same running time and one makes one small step or one leaves off too early or doesn't push as hard and he's going to get second because he did something dumb when he's been doing it all year. Um, I think that that's how you, show. you should do that for social yeah. media. You right. Should, should like, I? I'm dead serious. <laughs> take like eight professional athletes, get some of the Raptors, get some tracking. Hey, let's go. Yeah, it'd be funny. <laughs> Run a hundred meter. Just not Andre DeGrasse because he would just whip all of us. <laughs> oh um, I want to mm-hmm. ask about your diet. So what, oh, yeah. what, what's, what's the trick? What's the secret? What do you <laughs> prioritize? What do you make sure that you exclude always um, mm-hmm. for anybody out there just trying to better their, whether it be health or athletic ability? Uh, yeah, I think, for I think sure. Like um, I think the number one thing was learn your body. Um, it took me about right before 2016, I would say. So about five years ago, I, I learned what, like digest well, what, you know, gave me a little bit more brightness, what did make me hungry or full while I was training and competing. Um, And it took me a really, really long time to figure that out. Um, But once I figured it out, I was a very like, I can't eat dairy or gluten while I'm in training and competing. Um, Off season, I go crazy. I do what I want and I drink, I, I eat burgers, I do all of that because that's my mental happiness side, right? Right. Um, so, and I think that is like number one, stress releases so many endorphins and stress is a negative and it's an inflammatory. It's a, it's a negative response on the human body. And I think the number one thing I kept was not just nutrition, was trying to be happy. And by being happy is what I craved, if that made sense. So if I craved an ice cream the day before the Olympic final, I would go get the ice cream because I actually would sit up all night thinking about getting the ice cream instead of not eating it. Does that make sense? So anything I kind of, yeah. And so anything I kind of craved, I just go and do. So I get it over, it's done, it's over with. No, don't get me wrong. I mean, when I crave ice cream, I don't get, don't eat the whole tub. I'll go get myself a bowl and I'll eat just a moderate portion and that's what I kind of end with, you know, um, and, but at least my cr- craving was fixed, you know, um, and that's for everything. I think that's with people, they, they go on these diets, and they go on these things of telling your body no, and I think the more I've learned about my body is always telling it yes, because it's a positive. I think no's can be very negative, so I've tried to take no out of my vocabulary, fully um and that comes with food too um so really anything i i try to eat every three to four hours i know when i'm eating every three to four hours good portion sizes i always get my carbs my um protein and my um greens that's like always my number one and if i have to add a little bit of like salt on the side or a little bit of sugar then i do that but if i'm really really craving something sweet i'll go for I'll go for like a fruit first. And if that doesn't please me and I feel like I still need something else, then I go for like the snacks. Um, so I always make sure I have available good nutrients at hand first, cut up your fruit, cut up your vegetables, have them already kind of prepped in the meat or in the fridge so that you go to that first because you know, the human body gets lazy and we get busy. So that's, I think the number one thing is when I'm thinking about something is like have it ready on hand so I can grab it rather than just grabbing a chocolate bar or grabbing some chips um, because that's the easiest thing. And the last thing I say, like when I'm walking into a grocery store is I always look at things that last years after years. So if you go in and you walk down the aisles that that stuff's been sitting there for a year or like is expired in three years from now, Think about that when it goes into your body. Like, it's just sitting in there, right? Doesn't really give you a lot of nutrients from it. It doesn't really like, it's like kind of a stale type of food. Mm -hmm. So I try to get food that like goes bad within a week. I always try to have food and access to food that like I either have to throw out, which kind of sucks sometimes if I'm traveling and throw it out. Um, And it does get expensive that way too. But I tried to like think about it like that as a little bit more layman's term, like 
that's going to last a long time. That's probably not healthy for me. Um, but that's going to be, you know, moldy in three days. That's probably really good for me. Um, and that's kind of like the mentality I've learned over the last five years. That's super interesting. I, I love your anecdote about going for fruit before you go for snacks. I've never heard yeah. anybody say that before. Yeah, you just anything sweet, like even with um, even salty things, like I'll crave like chips, but I'll go for cucumbers with salt, put salt on it. And like that usually like, I'm like, oh, that's actually really good. And it's like, cucumbers <laughs> you're living in 2050 over here while we're all stuck in 2020 how is it Yo, listen, um, it's, it's a night ho- nicer here <laughs> <laughs> no no uh covid <laughs> i love it um mm-hmm. if you could i mean i i know you've traveled a bunch in your days but is there anywhere you mm-hmm. haven't been that you'd love to go i haven't been to russia believe it or not i would love to go over to russia wow. i haven't been to I don't know you know like you you have that like you always have that perception of like Russians are strict Russians are the like Mm. they always are kicking their athletes and they're doing things hard to like get them going you'd want to go for training I would want to yeah train down there or even just go and see it like that you don't really hear like this is the most beautiful place or um you know you don't really hear a lot about it and I don't know if that's just because of the culture and the you know between governments and prime ministers and all that yeah. stuff um you don't hear it as much but um i think russia would be really really pretty um i would love to go to fiji and bora bora i haven't been over to those places that's with more for that. vacation yeah i'm with you on, <laughs> with you on those yeah i'd love to do a little tiki like like a week in a tiki hut over the water or something like that that would be really kind of cool um and yeah hong kong i haven't been to china yet or sorry, I've been to China, I haven't been to Japan yet. So I'm really excited for Tokyo because that's something like I'm oh, really looking yeah. forward to. Um, when, what's, the, what's the verdict on when they're trying to push it to right now? So the exact same ye- well, day, but a year later. So, so nice. it'll be, yeah, July 24th is the opening ceremony. Um, but it's kind of cool. They rebrand it where it says like 2020 and then they just added an N and an E. So it's really cool how they rebrand it as it's still 2020, but it says 2021. Wow. Um, so I thought that was really cool. I like tell everybody about it because I'm like proud. And I don't even know why. <laughs> but I'm like, yo, that's so cool. I'm with you. I'm now going to share it. Like I have something to do right. with it as well. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I did the podcast and she told me about uh, it. Yeah, just put it as a front screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get the background, like how you can just add There that. you go. <laughs> In 2021. So. Uh, Mm -hmm. yeah no that that'll be that'll be super exciting so what what's your goal what do you want to do Mm -hmm. uh where do you want to take everything you do have you thought about doing other events at high levels have you thought about things what what what's your thought process and all that well it's so funny because um since we've been in covid there's been a little things i've been like intrigued with you know i'm starting a little business on the side called one body one life and it's going to be a lot of fitness and head to toe checklists. Um, so keep an eye for that. That's going to be something yes. really, really cool. Um, but I've also tried other things. I tried tennis and golf and I'm obsessed with both of them. I know it would take a long, long time to get to a professional level, but I don't doubt see myself like becoming a professional golf player once I was done track. Really? Like I could just kind of see, I love the patience. I love it's a different type of intensity. Um, I like you have to like control your breathing. Um, it's something that I was really intrigued with and, and, it, and it brought a lot of excitement out that I haven't seen um, since when, when I was first started pole vault. That's kind of what it felt like. Um, so maybe from, you know, I'll do two more Olympics as a pole vaulter and then do from age 30 to 40 as a professional golfer. Who knows? <laughs> Golf is such a great so, pro professional sports sport. Yeah. I'm surprised more incredible athletes don't. Well, I think it's so, it's, it's technical. It gets like pole vault. Yeah. Like you could be in the best shape. You could go to the gym, you can work out, you can eat healthy. But like, if you're just not mentally on and you let little things get to you, it affects your whole game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you got guys like Phil Mickelson at the top of his game. I wouldn't necessarily call him. Uh, he's not, a, right. him and LeBron aren't in the same shape. 
no, 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 <laughs> definitely not. But see, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> right. So it's technical. Like they're, right. That's, so, that's, what, that's what's cool about sports is you don't have to be a LeBron, you know? It's like, that's what's awesome. I could totally see you being a pro tennis player for a couple of years before being a professional <laughs> golfer, though. Well, I thought about that too, and I'm doing, and I was like hitting, and I was like, I was getting frustrated. So that's how I know I like it too. But it was almost making me angry <laughs> because, like, I was like hitting it outside the line because I was hitting it too hard. You're one of those and angry like, tennis players. Oh no, oh, <laughs> it's not good. Especially if I'm like losing to somebody, I'm like, no, we need to restart all the sets. Let's go, like restart now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been that's been my two things and I you know what if I would were to say like I would try other sports it'd probably be those two for sure for sure it would be interesting I mean you know mm -hmm. I, I wonder have you played against any professional tennis players yet well what was funny and this is what kind of got me on and got my first tennis racket from was when I was um at the Rogers Cup in Toronto I would get went as like an influencer to build the Rogers Cup up yeah. And I was playing against Dennis from Canada. And the one coach came up, he goes, man, you're kind of fast. I said, yeah, because I run track. He goes, no, but like you're really fast to the net to get something. And then, you know, like my wheels just start turning because you're I'm like, like, oh, so I'm, I'm now the best tennis player in the world? Cool. <laughs> That's Thank what you. I thought. I'm like, of course. yes, like of course. tell me a little more. Like tell me what else I'm good at. <laughs> but no so you're I, like want to be my coach too <laughs> right that's what I was thinking but that's where it kind of started and I was like you know what like later on that would be kind of cool if I did something like that and that's where like I'm just an idea like that of positivity into my brain and that's why I say like what you say to other people or even your energy around people are so important what you do especially the children because like they vibe off of it and like a, a yes over a no is so much more positive to me and so much more effective at the end of the day. What do you, I, uh, I'm curious. So when you say a yes versus a no, um, mm -hmm. like, is it for you as simple as like, if that coach had said, like, you're, you're slow to the net, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be as interested whereas because this coach said so. yes wow yeah i think so and i think the way my coaches coach me is kind of like that they're like they'll be like yes that was better but next time try this you know what i mean it's never like no go back do it again and i mean i think it really all depends on the the human and the individual like you can take criticism i mean i know at one point in my life that i was taking like people talking saying I was never going to be an elite athlete or, or I'm too pretty to be an elite athlete or you're not good enough to be an elite athlete or track and field the hobby like let me know when you're done so you can social be serious media about people. life yeah and social media people ex relationships and I use those to be like well I'm gonna prove you wrong so I think there's a difference um, on the way you like approach it and like depending on the individual and I was I was able to switch that around where I think some people, depending on their personality, would take that and be like, you're right, like, wh why am I doing what I'm doing, you know, and, and that's where I've gotten it's very, very essential to how you speak to other people, especially if you're coaching other kids, or even like giving advice to other people, because I'm a big believer that if you believe in it, like, you can accomplish anything in life, like, there's never something that's impossible to me. Yeah, totally. No, I, I think that's great. And I, I think on that note, one of the best things I've ever heard somebody say, and I can't remember who it was, somebody might have said it, uh, like just texted to me, but they were like, um, nobody who's ever doing more than you will ever hate on you. True. Absolutely. Because they're Absolutely. way too focused on their own thing. Exactly. And, I, and I think that is a powerful, powerful message for people too, because opposites attract. And that's what I've always said, the, the more positive and uplift you become and the more impact you give on the world, the more negatives want to bring you down because it's a trap. It attracts. Yeah, it's super interesting. No, I, I even see that on my own Instagram, like people. Right. It's super yeah. interesting. But I do generally think that it is very difficult to hate on like true happiness like if you're happy oh, and you're like smiling, yes. it's really, really hard to drop like 
you so know. hard. And, and that's what the, this whole like movement of self, self love and being your own person and doing all these things. It's, it's for that reason. Like your mind and the way you were raised and what we go through in life is like, you don't, you don't know, you don't know the future. We don't predict it. But like, if you can be so content and so confident in your own skin and so happy and you go after your dreams and you accomplish your dreams. And if you're just happy with one dream you accomplish in life, good for you, but like own it, like own that stuff and, and, and embrace that through to people around you. Because at the end of the day, it's like, why are you wasting your time trying to tell somebody how to live their life? Like you're never going to be in their shoes ever. And so why are you going to waste your breath telling them what they should do when you can just tell them about your experience and maybe motivate them or inspire them? And that's kind of been my, like, that's took, taken me a really long time to learn because I always thought I had to be this person. And it was like, no, like I can be more than just an athlete. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's like, whoa, Alicia, like sometimes you're doing all these things, but go away. Like you're not in my life. You're not living there. Like if something bad happens to check, then I'll take a step back and I'll realize like, okay, I did too much. Now let's reanalyze and let's keep going forward. Um, and I think that's where you and I really understand that. And that's, I, I, I wish everybody in the world could understand that. Totally. But, uh, and, and also, you know, in addition to that, I mm -hmm. think that, you know, it's super important. Like a lot of people when they, when they, when they clash, like you mentioned that mm -hmm. opposites check, I think it's, you know, some of it stems from jealousy. Whereas I think in, mm -hmm. in a world that I hope, because people don't realize in the day, day and age of social media, how accessible people are that yeah, you can like, and I really try to preach this as much as possible. You can literally contact anybody in the world and work with mm -hmm. them like that. I know the opportunities are like insane nowadays. Like I almost wish I was like 10 years younger and like yeah. living in this world. And a lot of people say, well, I wish I was never in this world. And I think it's always, you got to look at it the way the positive outcome is. And yeah, you know, it's sometimes it's negative and sometimes it's not the best, but there's always a positive outlook on every situation. Um, and I think that's what we, we forget sometimes because the negatives hurt so bad that it's like, that's what leaves the scars where the positives come like, you know, all the time. And if you're it's reaching for crazy. them, somebody can literally compliment you on everything that you're like, that you wish people would compliment you about. And then one person says one thing and you're like, oh man, this right. really is terrible, isn't it? And then you just gotta, you know, I, I think. It's, it's sad, but you gotta change your whole mental on that. And that's, what, that's the hardest part. But I think everybody's capable of doing that. It's just put like, you know, they say like, you could always walk a horse to the water or lead the horse to the water, but you can't make a drink. And that's the same thing in life. Like you can help and motivate people as much as you can. But at the end of the day, like, people are going to want to have to want to do it for themselves, you know? Totally. And I, I think it's also, you know, a matter of who you keep in, like in your close circle, who your friends with yes. on a daily basis, because mm -hmm. I think, you know, if, if anybody listening out there is like, gets bogged down with like the negative stuff, it's only going to mm -hmm. further perpetuate you thinking the wrong things. Yes. So it's just about yes. and, so and personally, like, I always agree on, you know, you always keep your enemies the closest. Um, and I'm one of those people that I've learned, like, I don't just have one circle, I have like two, three, four. But those two, three, fours don't know, they think that they're in one. Does that make sense? And I, that's always been my mental behind it. Walk, and knowing it sounds crazy. That. Walk me through that. It's, it's been something that I, that I sit here and I would, I hate to cause pain upon somebody. Um, I think it hurts me more than hurting other people. Same thing but I've, helping somebody makes you feel good. Yes. Yes. And I think there's a, a boundary of how much energy you give to certain people. My, my initial circle, you get a whole 110 Alicia Newman. Like that is what you get. But my second, you probably will only get 60 to 50%. My third and my fourth, you're going to get less than that. And that's kind of the, like, the energy level of like how I'm giving you that attention or giving you, you know, that, that um, inspiration or motivation. I never think that someone out there is not better or worse than me. 
everyone to me has always been very equal to me, whether you got a lot of money, no money, whether you're a celebrity or not, like I've always been raised to, to treat others the way you want to be treated. Um, and that's something that I've learned to develop this circle. So when my inner circle is making me mad, then I, I can focus that energy on that. But when my fourth circle is making me mad, I need, I know I need to take two or three weeks away from that person to like not give them any more of my energy and get over what just happened. Um, and that's kind of the different circles and like how I like see people in my life. And I mean, it also gives me a peace of mind and that's been always something that like again when you're happy life is happy your body's happy you're in good shape you're confident you're proud nothing really around you is bad except for little x factors that happen but that happens to everyone so if you can accept that then I mean that's only a work I guess a life worth living you know totally no and I think you know last note on this I would uh mm -hmm. I would say that, like you said, peace of mind, but I put that as protecting your energy. If you yeah, protect your energy, you. they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So as long exactly. as you're, you know, making sure that, you know, you keep as, as mm -hmm. much positive every, around you, you're going to be yeah. in great shape. And everyone's unique. And that's what's so incredible about every single person. There's not another Alicia Newman. So that's what's really unique. Well, definitely like, not. Definitely. Give me, you, you know, but there's no, you know, like anybody, you know, and that's what's really, really cool is like your energy can motivate so many people, but then my sister's energy motivates so many people and my brothers motivate so many people, but like everybody inspires everybody. And I think if we can keep that and like learn from their mistakes or learn from other, you know, things that have happened in life, you can only be a better person. And um, obviously, always, always helping out, always saying like yes rather than no. <laughs> I love it. I think that's great. Is that how we wrap it? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think it's great. I'm glad. I'm glad that you said yes to doing this. No, I was so excited when you reached out. I was like, absolutely. Like this is something like different for me. I mean, I've been on a couple podcasts, but. Um, I've always felt like I've always had so much to say and I know I'm going to read a book one day and I'm going to put all my thoughts in it, but, um, it's definitely nice to vocalize it to somebody too. That is just as like go getter and like positivity. I could just feel so much energy coming through the phone. So I appreciate it. Of course. So where, last question here, where can people yeah. find you best when they want to follow you? Oh. Well, Alicia Newman, simple as that on Instagram and all my social medias. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Amazing. You're awesome. Thank you again for coming Aww. on. And uh, oh, I appreciate it. Catch everybody on the next episode. Peace. Yeah. Sweet.